Today, I'm going to be sharing my typical workflow for setting up an electrical and reflected ceiling plan in ARCHICAD. This is a pretty basic residential project. We're going to combine the two into one plan. So let's kick off from the beginning, starting off with our floor plan. To get this to our electrical slash reflected ceiling plan, there's just a little bit of boring setup stuff that we need to do, but it won't take too long. So let's get started. All we need to do is set up a layer combination. We'll go control L, which will bring up our layers. From here, we'll just go new on the layer combination side. We'll type in electrical plan. We'll go OK. And we're going to create a new layer, which we're going to have all of our electrical and our switches and our legend, all of that on. So let's call that electrical legend example. We'll go OK. Now we'll want to make sure that this layer shows up on our electrical plan. So all we need to do is just make sure the eye icon is turned on and we've got the electrical plan selected and we go update. So we'll go okay. From here, you'll wanna bring in a legend, which is going to show all the key components of our electrical and reflected ceiling plan from fans to lights to electrical power points. If you don't have your own legend, I highly recommend Neurofit's architect data. If we go to page 16 and 17, you'll see a lot of different examples of typical symbols that are used within the industry, as well as a bunch of other interesting information. So in this case, once I've got it copied, I'll want to turn it to the correct layer. So I'm going to turn it to electrical legend example. And that's going to hide those. We'll keep on doing this until all of our elements disappear. They're disappearing from our example because on the electrical plan I had set up before, we haven't got the electrical legend example layer turned on in the layer combination. Anyway, we're almost through the boring setup stuff. So from here, we'll go back to our floor plan. We're going to create a duplicate, clicking and holding, then tapping and holding in control. We'll drag that to our electrical plan. Set up a folder. You just click on this little icon just down here, click on that, and you can give it a file name. We'll go okay. So we've got a duplicate of the plan set up in the view map. From here, we're going to want to right click, go to view settings in your layer combinations. We'll go to the one we set up just before, which is our electrical plan. Plan. We'll go OK. And there we go. So our legend has just popped up, but there's information that we don't want to show because it's going to be conflicting and drawing attention away from the primary drawing, which is just going to be those electrical and reflective ceiling plan details. So let's get rid of the dimensions and the north point. We don't want to delete these because we still want them to show up on the floor plan. So we just need to hold in Alt for the eyedropper tool, select Control A, which is going to select all of our dimensions. Yep, all of them are on the dimension layer. So I'll just deselect. Let's go to Control L, which is going to bring up our layer and we're just going to turn off dimensions and we're going to go update. So that's going to change our layer combination. We'll go OK. Excellent. That's turned off all of our dimensions. Our north point is on text. So in this case, that's going to work out for us as well because we're going to be turning off the text as well. So what we'll just do, go back into it. We'll go back into our layers, turn off text and we'll go update and we'll go OK. Now from here, whenever we go to our floor plan, we've still got all of our dimensions, all of our text labels. And if we go back to our ground floor plan proposed, it's all taken off so it's nice and clean. We start with a clean slate. So that it's even more subtle, what we can do is we can take a fill. Let's make it 50%. We'll turn it so that the pen is white and we've got transparent set. Now we're going to click over the top and from here, we're going to select it and bring the display all the way to the front. And we're just going to send it back just a couple of orders. Uh, we'll turn off the perimeter line just so that it kind of grays out our floor plan just a little bit, which is going to make our legend elements stick out that little bit more. So from here, let's cover a couple of different rooms. Let's grab the polyline and we're going to be using this as a reference line. I'm just going to turn this to the ARCHICAD layer for now. Let's draw just on this edge of the wall just here. I'm going to click and I'm going to go to the multiply tool on the pet palette just down here. Then I'm going to go to distribute and then I'm going to go three and I'm going to make sure that minus one is clicked on. It's, it's going to make more sense in a second. Just watch the example. It's going to be cool. So we'll get click and drag all the way until we get to the wall. Let's do the same thing with this one here. Essentially what I'm doing, I'm just dividing the room into four quadrants. There we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. From here, we're going to have lights evenly spaced. So what we can do is we can just grab these from our legend. Just make sure that they're grouped. Control G. I'm going to select it. Select it from the middle. Tap Control just so that we create a duplicate and select it just into the middle of our grid line. Let's select that one, duplicate across just to here. Let's select this one and duplicate both of those down to here. And there we go. So we've got our lights set up for this master bedroom just here. Let's chuck in a ceiling fan as well. So we'll grab this, duplicate it on over. And from here, let's get some light switches so that we can turn on our lights. So let's duplicate this, flip it around. I wanna have two switches, one for the lights and one for the fan. So let's duplicate this as well. Now, a very handy tool for actually creating paths from our switches to 
our elements is the spline tool. So this one just up here, we'll select this. I want to click on our switch then click on our lights. And then from here, I'm just going to click at each of the center points and the spline tool is going to create a nice curve. Let's select, let's finish the line by double clicking. And from here, I'm just going to want to turn this line into a thin dash. There we go. All right, let's clean this up a bit. Let's grab our grid that we just created before. All of our lines just here and we'll go cut and we'll bring this down a layer. I like to keep them just below, just so that if I do want to bring the grid back up, it's not too much of a hassle. I don't have to redo the whole thing again. So let's go back up a story uh, by clicking control up and there we go. So we've got essentially the reflected ceiling portion almost done. Now, what I might do to make it a little bit easier to get the second line so it's not colliding with too many elements, I'll just mirror these switches just here. And then that way, if I select the spline, I click off this light switch just here, I can have it curve into this fan just there. These switches are just for indicative purposes purposes and they'll represent a typical light switch which you're clicking on and off. You'll see some with one, two, three and even four and more. So we're not limited with how many switches that we can just have on one panel. From here let's do the next easy one. Let's grab our double PowerPoint. I've got these grouped so I'm just going to bring these over, clicking control to duplicate and I'll just rotate this around. Let's create one either side on the bed just so that you've got electrical power points to be able to charge your phones and other accessories with. I also like to create a couple more around the room just in case we've got other features like standing lamps or other stuff that we need charging. All right, let's see what else we've got in our legend. From here, we've got fluorescent lights, which if we grab those, we can put these into the garage. We're going to have these just above where the cars are. You'd want these evenly spaced. I'd, I'd do this in third doing a similar trick to what we did just before. What I'll do, I'll just grab this line here. I'll create a guide, then I'll go in through to the multiply tool. Let's go to two. It's going to create three segments for us. There we go. Clicking and dragging across. From here to get our midway point, I'm just going to create another guide reference. Just going to click in the middle and drag that across there. Excellent. So I'm going to hover over the middle of our light and just bring that to the center. And half of that, 25. There we go. Do a similar type thing with this light just here. And one up and 25 down. Excellent. I'll take my grid lines just here. And this last little one here, I'll cut it, go control down and paste it on the story just below. And with that, I've pretty much got my garage set up. I'll just need to get the light switch. I'll duplicate it over just here. Typically, I try and have the switches within hands reach from the door just so you're not fumbling around in the dark. All right, let's grab our spline from before holding in the eyedropper tool and then we'll just select on through to represent our line just through there. Oh, now before we get too much further, all of our lines appeared to be underneath that 50% fill. So let's use the selection tool. We'll just drag it over the section here, just up here. I'm going to select this by holding in alt, which gives us our eyedropper tool. I'll select the spline and from here, I'll also add a criteria that it's going to be a certain pen type. So I'll just type in pen, double click pen and go plus. That's going to select all those lines. Let's use the eyedropper tool, select it for circles, which is going to select all of our circles. And last but not least, let's do it again using the eyedropper tool to hover over our fill. We'll select it and then we'll go click and that's going to select all of our fills. Last but not least, the lines. There we go. Let's go outside of here, right click and go display order and bring to front. There we go. They're a bit clearer there now. Let's turn that back off. So if we go undo, we'll see that they're slightly faded. And if we go redo, we'll see they're much clearer being above that 50% fill. One little trick I was taught when I was first learning how to do electrical plans was always to avoid having a light over the top of a fan. If you have it over the top of a fan, when the fan blades go past, it's going to create a strobing effect. Strobing, which is like a light turning on and off really quickly. So we try and make sure that we've got lights adequately distanced from fans in any of the different rooms. All right, let's just go back through to our example. All right, if we just go back to our floor plan, we'll notice that we haven't set our fill to the correct layer. So it's going to be showing over the top. So let's select all the things that we didn't set up correctly to begin with. And we'll select those to the electrical legend example, which is going to make those disappear. Handy thing is we can do this after. So not everything has to be perfect straight off the bat takes a bit of the pressure off. Each house is unique. So from here, you'll just need to go through applying each of the different elements to the rooms accordingly. One other little thing to watch out for is cavity sliders. You'll want to make sure that your lights are set on a wall where the cavity isn't behind. This is so that the cabling can go down through the back of the stud and the cavity isn't jamming up against the cords. 